Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. It's my pleasure to be on. We're continuing our abortion series, and we've been looking at the soul um, last time, because the soul seems to be the crux of the matter, right? When does the soul get formed, and, and thus when does human life begin? So, Dr. Shabir, we talked about the soul being an emergent property last time. And now we want to challenge that idea with a verse from the Qur'an which seems to suggest that the soul emerged at some point far before we were actually born. So can you talk about that, Dr. Shabir? Yes. So the verse in question is uh, in the seventh chapter is the 172nd verse. And it says in Arabic, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ذُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِيَتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدُهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدْنَا أَنْ تَكُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ So basically the translation might read something like this. Uh, when God took the descendants uh, of Adam from the backs of the descendants of Adam hmm. um, and, and caused them to bear witness against themselves, asking them, Am I not your Lord? They said, uh, of course, uh, and uh, we bear witness to that. And, and, and all of this was done so that on the day of judgment, you wouldn't be able to say uh, that we were previously unaware of this. Hmm. Uh, now, they, they, so, so that's, that's a rough translation. And now we can go to how this is interpreted, what it all means. Mm -hmm. So it means... Like, did it actually happen? Is it a construct? What is it? Yeah, so, so I should answer that quickly by saying that um, in the first place, this is mentioned all in the past tense. But does that, that does not mean that because it's in the grammatical past tense that it actually happened in the past. Because when prophets speak, there is uh, a phenomenon known from the Hebrew Bible and also from the Quran uh, that uh, something may be spoken about in the past tense grammatical structure, but it's really referring to a future event. Uh, but with, certain, with a degree of certainty that allows the prophet to speak of it as if it's a done deal, it's already in the past tense, or it can be expressed in the past tense. So, uh, yes, it's in the past tense, but it doesn't mean that it happened in the past already. If we imagine this to have happened in the past, now look at the logic behind it. The logic behind it would be uh, that God... Uh, created souls before they came into this world and had human bodies. And those souls were already uh, on speaking terms with God. Mm. And, and God makes them bear witness against themselves that they are recognized and they know that God is their Lord. Then they come into this world. Then how do we get atheists? Well, we have to say that most of us uh, know that, that, I mean, we don't have a memory of that past event when we said this. Um, and, and we can give the same level of um, allowance to the atheist as well. It looks like we've all forgotten. Mm -hmm. Both believers and non-believers have by now forgotten that we had this previous pact with God. Uh, but then on the day of judgment, God is going to call the, the atheists uh, uh, to, to account because they had made a previous pact with God that they will only recognize God as their Lord. And now in the world, they forgot all about this, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and they acted as if God wasn't their God. Uh, but then you can, well, you can see that the atheist might say at that point, but wait a minute, I'm not the one who deliberately forgot. It, that, that was just my nature. I, you know, there was nothing in my constitution that would have allowed me to remember that pact, just like believers did not remember that pact either. Mm -hmm. um, so a better explanation, so, so logically that does not really fit, that God is trying to create this scenario and this drama to prove the case, because in the end, the case would not be proven by that way. What is more likely is that the Quran is saying here that uh, when the child develops to a certain extent, the child comes to a certain level of maturity, the child comes to recognize that God is the Lord. Um, and, and that might be the turning point at which eventually a person becomes either a believer accepting that basic recognition or a non-believer rejecting that. And so God might call the person to witness. Didn't you arrive at a certain time in your life where you could recognize that there is a God? Mm -hmm. And then why did you turn away from that? Mm -hmm. so, so then that makes sense. Logically, it, you know, in terms of proving a thing, uh, it, uh, it, it fits together. Mm -hmm.
there are hadiths that try to explain this verse. And uh, uh, when I hear Muslim scholars describing the, the contents of this verse and explaining it, they explain it not in reference to the precise wording of the verse as much as I would like to. They, they switch over to the precise wording of hadiths. Mm. And hadiths give a very different impression. Hadiths, in fact, very clearly make it such that this is all an event in the past. Mm -hmm. All of the souls of all human beings ever to be born were already uh, in, in one gathering in which God made this declaration, um, really asked them this question, am I not your Lord? And they all replied, Bala, yes. Um, or, you know, of course. And, uh, uh, and then, of course, they were put into this world. They all forgot about it. And then uh, the rest ensues. Uh, but the, the verse itself does not say that uh, the souls were taken from the backs of Adam. Mm. From the back of Adam. Mm -hmm. It says the souls were taken from, uh, or, or the, 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 the progeny was taken from the backs of the progeny of Adam. Mm. It, it doesn't mention Adam at all. We can infer that, okay, it, Adam is in the lineup as well. So it started with Adam. Uh, not just from his descendants, but the verse doesn't actually say that literally. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we think more carefully about what the verse actually says, uh, we could understand that it doesn't hap have to happen all at once. Uh, it could happen serially. So from Adam, we get the children of Adam, and from the children of Adam, we get the children of the children of Adam, and then the, the great-grandchildren and so on. Uh, all the way down. So it happens uh, serially, not all at once. And uh, serially, as the children grow up, they uh, come to that point where they can recognize God. And uh, that is what they will be held to account for on the Day of Judgment, if they turn away from that basic recognition. So that's what we refer to uh, as the fitra. And uh, elsewhere in the Quran, Allah says, fitra tallahi lati, uh, it is the fitra or the natural disposition on which God has created human beings. Mm -hmm. So the natural disposition we understand would be uh, to recognize and to worship God. And with those who turn away from that uh, natural disposition will be held accountable. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Shabir, if this verse doesn't show that, you know, the souls emerged at a time before we were ever born, how does that fit in with your understanding of abortion in Islam? Yeah, well, the, the classical understanding of this verse would have meant, uh, would have been brought in harmony with the hadith, which says that uh, the soul is breathed in at the end of 120 days. And uh, the 120 days was that cutoff period that the classical Islamic jurists uh, spoke about when they talked about abortion. Even those who were most liberal in allowing for abortion said up to 120 days, but not thereafter, unless. Uh, the life of the mother was in danger, in which case you might have to let the child go to save the mother, which is the primal uh, life here. And uh, we're saving one, but we, we have to uh, pick the, the lesser of two options here, the two evil, lesser of two evils. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we realize now that uh, the 120 days cutoff uh, rule uh, was based on the hadith, not on any verse of the Quran, and uh, we can see that from a modern perspective, it seems uh, most uh, uh, reasonable to think of the soul as an emergent property rather than something pre-created and then put into human beings. Uh, then uh, we, 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 we looked at verses that might have supported that view, but uh, this verse that we've looked at now would have been the one to challenge that view. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we see that the challenge comes not from the verse itself, but from uh, an, uh, an understanding of that verse uh, that, that tries to tie that verse in with hadiths. And uh, when we look at the verse by itself, uh, literally, uh, we see that it does not have to require that view that the souls were pre-created. Uh, it can be in harmony with the idea that the soul is an emergent property. And if we arrive at that, then we can conclude our series uh, by saying, and, and of course, we need to tease out this conclusion a little bit more by re recapping the whole um, discussion. Uh, but in short, we can say that the 120 days cutoff period uh, is not based on anything firm. It is only based on a hadith, which itself is questionable. And that leaves room for people to think that, okay, so abortion is bad in itself because you are destroying a life uh, and a potential baby. Uh, especially in the early stages, so it's potential, and then it becomes a real baby with, uh, you know, its own heart and its own brain and, and consciousness as a human being. So 
In the early stages, uh, this is reprehensible, but in the later stages, it is even more reprehensible. And so one should use one's judgment, uh, but getting over the 120 days uh, cutoff barrier would mean that uh, you know if some families are struggling with the idea, they just did their tests, and uh, you know it's not their fault that the tests could not have been done earlier, and now they found out, lo and behold, this child is going to be born with a deformity uh, that could be have very serious implications for the child and for the health of the family of overall and so on. So. Uh, are they limited and restricted by the 120 days rule? I think our discussion leads to the conclusion uh, that the 120 days rule is not firm, or should not be firm, um, and there is some flexibility in the matter. But of course, one has to take advice from medical doctors and uh, not just follow one's own whims on the matter. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, Dr. Chibere. You're welcome. Our videos reach people all over the world. We hope you will seize the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Please support us today.